Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about FSX on tap practically. We are going to discuss about how we can use FSX on tap over here. Now to understand this, I have this particular diagram. Here we have two servers, server 1 and server 2. These two servers are running into the different availability zone. And we want centralized storage for this particular server. So we are going to use FSX on tap over here. I have these two servers. Basically we have this Linux servers. So we can use NFS over here to connect with the FSX. If you have Windows server, you can also use SMB with FSX. You can also use iSCSI with FSX on tap. So the advantages of FSX on tap is it is supporting uh, NFS, it is supporting SMB, it is supporting I, uh, iSCSI as well. Now, to, to configure this, the first requirement we have is to create security group. I have two security group right now. One security group which is protecting both of my servers. Name is server SD. Here we don't have anything extra. We have just SSH allowed from anywhere. And here I have one another security group known as ONTAP. Now here we have to allow NFS port number 111 and 2049. And we are allowing this port from only server SD. So server can access my FSX ONTAP. So as a prerequisites, we have to create these two security group. I have already created this for you. Let me verify this. Okay. So here, if I'm going to the screen, uh, AWS console, right now I am in the EC2 dashboard. Okay. Now, if you go to the EC2 dashboard, here you have security group options. See here, I have server SD and on tap. In the server SD, I provided inbound rule. In the outbound rule, I have all traffic allowed. But in the inbound rule, I have SSH allowed from anywhere. Okay. So this is like the one rule I have. Let's go to this and we can say that we have this ready. Okay. Now the second option is to go to this on tap security group. We have to verify that we have NFS 111 and 402049 allowed or not. Okay. So here we have another security group. In the inbound, we have edit and look at this we have port number 111 allowed and 2049 allowed and this actually allowed from only our server sd group so here it is a server sd okay let me tell you it is a server sd over here right another thing is here you are getting custom tcp why because if you want to allow 2049 you will find out from the list but if you want to allow 111 it is not in the list so you have to select custom tcp over here and then you can select 111 okay so these two security groups are ready and let me go to this and we can say that now it is ready. now we have to create two servers over here both servers will be linux and we are going to create them into the two different availability zone okay so i'm going to the ec2 dashboard and here i'm going to create this so launch instance Here I will to say server 1, Amazon Linux, sorry I just selected yeah, Amazon Linux, okay T2 micro, here I have this key pair, I have this key pair already in my system, if you don't have you can create new one. I am going to add it over here, here I will to say I want to create this into the AP South 1A, okay automatic public IP enable. We already created this group, so I'm going to select this like a server SG. Okay, we are not going to touch any option over here, so let me click on launch instance. Then let me create another instance as well. Okay, so launch instance. I'm going to say server 2. Amazon Linux, this is a key pair I have, here I am going to click on edit, AP South 1B, okay, we have the security group, so I am going to select this, it is server SG, and then it is 
done. Okay. Now, we have to go to this FSX. So, I have this FSX open over here. See, I already created one on tap FSX on tap. The name is on tap. It is ready. Why? Because, because the problem is when you are going to set up on tap, it is taking almost 30, 15 to 30 minutes. Okay. So, what I am going to do over here, I have this ready. Okay. I am going to create new file system. I will explain everything on this and then we will use this one. The only thing is we want to save our time. Okay. So, I am going to click on create file system. Now, we have three file system in FSX. Right now, I am with the FSX. I said that I want to create this and it is asking me that which file system you want to create. I am saying that I want to create Amazon FSX NetApp on tap. Let me click on next. Now, see here we have two options. If I am going to select quick create, it will create everything by with the default option. Here I am going to say standard create. Okay. Here I can give name. I am giving name like a new on tap. Okay. Here you have two options that you want to create single availability zone or multi AZ. Multi AZ will provide you high level of redundancy, but it will take time to create as well. I'm going to say single AZ, so my FSX will be on tap will be on the single availability zone. The minimum volume size must be 1024 GB or 1 TB. So I'm going to add this. You can add more if you want after creating this as well. As per we have like us, if we talk about performance requirement, we have two things provision IOPS and throughput capacity. In the previous video, we already discussed about what is provision uh, uh, IOPS and throughput. Okay. So, same we have over here. If you are going with the automatic, you are going to get 3 IOPS per GB. Okay. So, if you store 1 GB of data, you will get 3 IOPS per GB, like 3 input output per second. Right. You can also select use provision. So, you can decide your IOPS. Here, you will get great flexibility, great speed. But yes, you have to pay for the IOPS as well. The maximum is 80,000 IOPS. Here we are learning this. So I'm going to set up automatic. Same way, three throughput, like how much data you are going to store at a time per second. So it is about throughput. Same, we have 128 megabytes per second is a default throughput. You can specify this. If you are going to specify, you can go up to 2048 MB. But Yes, we have to pay extra for this as well. So, I am going with the recommendation setting, right? Then we have VPC, our virtual private cloud. I am using default VPC. Here, we have to set up security group. We already created security group on tab. So, I am going to use this, right? Then, it will ask you like in which AZ you want to place this because we have single AZ. Okay, we can select single AZ over here. If you select multi, if you have multi AZ, you can select multiple AZ, but right now it is allowing me to select only one because in which AZ I want to place my on tab. So I'm going to select this. By default, it will allow encryption. We are not going to specify any password for the encryption or anything. We are going with the default encryption setting. Now, FSX on tab will create one virtual machine. You can give name over here. I am going to give name on on tab VM. And I have already having one, so I'm going to say new. You can specify password over here. If you want to access, like in the future, you can access this virtual machine and you can give or use on tap operating system command over here if you want to. But we want to understand like how the things are working in the on tap. So I'm not going to specify any volume. The virtual machine will be Linux. Okay. Now, Active Directory, if you want to connect with the Active Directory and you want to take advantage of SMB, you have like a client of Microsoft Windows, then you can connect this. We are not going to connect this. Okay. So this will create our virtual machine. Now here you can provide volume name. Okay. So in on tab, we are going to get one volume, volume underscore one. The right now our own tab size is one TB. And here I'm going to create like a 500 MB volume. It is up to you. Minimum is 20 MB. You have one TB, right? You can create multiple volume over here. I want to create this volume and want to store data and uh, access this. So, read, write. 
you can also enable data protection okay you can also use storage efficiency these are like uh, uh, on tape advantages like deduplication compression technologies right now we are going to disable this i don't want to take any snapshot so none okay we are not going to change anything for the default value theory okay i don't want snap lock policy as well right then we have backup see this is advantage of managed service it will take care of my backup now i don't want to take a backup because we want to understand on tap and how we are going to connect this okay so we are not going to enable backup right now now next now see when you click next you are going to get all these options right many people thinking that these are like a uh, error or anything no these are not error what they are saying that suppose you have single az now once you click create file system you cannot convert your single az on tap into the multi az so these are the options with the right red options they are saying that you cannot edit this changes green you can edit this okay so for example you can edit volume you can increase the size okay all these things are possible okay see this is a 500 mb volume now if i want to add another 200 mb and i want to create 700 mb you can do this because it is editable option editable after creation okay so you just need to click on create file system and it will create file system now what happened if i am going to click over here it is creating right now and it will take 30 minutes okay and i don't want to waste your time so what i have done i have already created one on tap options over here so we are understanding this it will create this and i will delete this afterwards but let me go to our existing on tap because it is available right now it is creating so now i am going to old on tap which is ready for you guys so we are going to access this so here i am clicking on this now see here we have administration you can change your administrator password over here for your on tap virtual machine when you click on storage virtual machine you will get this on tap virtual machine over here okay so yes even you are creating your cloud volume on tap fsx will create one virtual machine you can access this virtual machine and you can also use all on tap virtual machine operate on tap operating system commands over here with this okay then you can go to the volumes here i am getting two volumes one is 1 gb root volume for my on tap operating system and here i have this one volume which we have created for 500 mb okay if you want to enable backup you can also enable this okay if you want to update your uh, file system you can also do this so right now my on tap is ready i want to connect this on tap with my two linux machines okay how first of all i will go to the volumes okay see i am having a confusion because i have two but one is a pending so this is my volume machine let me make it easy see i am going to the on tap this is my main that i already created okay then i am going to the volumes okay this is my volumes now when you click on volumes here you will get one option that how you can attach this volume with your linux system and with your windows system right we are having linux system so we are going to follow this particular command but to give this command i have to log into my linux instance so let me log into this okay i have this particular command prompt open okay so let me open new command prompt okay going to open command prompt i'm going to open two command prompt one command prompt for server 1 and another command prompt for server 2 okay i have my key into the download folder so going to the download folder ssh this i my key name is cloud fox key.pem okay ec2 this user now i have to copy ip so let me go to ec2 okay here i have server 1 going to copy this ip of server 1 okay and let me log in with this 
yes now i'm logged in into the server one now it's time to log into the server two same procedure let me copy ip address this is ip and i'm going to paste it over here so right now i am logged in to my both of my server look at this the ip address we have different 172.31.45 and here it is 621 okay so please take care about this now first of all i am logging as a root so sudo as i again i also log into this as a root okay now i just need to copy the command over here okay so going to the volume here we have this command i'm going to copy this okay i'm already logging as a root so i'm not going to use sudo over here it will create one fsx volume okay so now it is done we are creating this on the root volume okay and on the root of my uh mount point right so here done so we have created fsx folder over here how i can verify I am I am going to the root and I'm going to say ls. Okay, here we will get one fsx folder as well. Done. Same way here ls and here I am getting this fsx folder as well. Let me clear the screen. Okay, now I am going to copy this command which will mount my netapp on tap volume with my linux ec2 instance okay so i'm going to paste it if you are not getting any error it means successful i'm going to paste it over here as well and it is done now how i can test it so i am on server one going to the fsx folder ls okay here i have two files so i'm going to check it out over here that i have the same as well or not cd slash fsx and see whatever i have storage or stored data in my volume i am able to access this from both you can also create the new one as well let's say that i'm going to vi and creating one file okay let's say that cat and new file hi i am writing from server one okay See, I got this file. I can see this what I have done over here. Okay. See, I'm writing to server 1. If I'm going to the another server and if I'm giving command like ls. Okay. Here I'm giving command get net file. I'm getting this. If I'm creating folder mkdir and let's say that fox. Okay. I'm getting same directory over here. So here we are using on tab as a shared storage device. So this is use case of on tab. We are going to learn lots of lots of about cloud. We have all the practicals that we are going to perform over here in our 100 days challenge. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to become our CloudFox community member, we have link in the description. You can also become CloudFox member so you can learn live from me. Don't forget to subscribe now it's time to delete our resources okay see i have this particular file system now this is creating it will take time to create like so we are not going to delete this i will delete this but right now what i'm doing i'm going to select this on tab and i'm going to delete this file system look at this what is happening if i would delete this okay see cannot delete this the file system while it has a storage virtual machine okay so you have to delete everything into the sequence first of all you have to go to this on tap here you will get the storage virtual machine you have to delete this virtual machine first okay so delete storage virtual machine yes it is deleting it will take some time to delete this okay see Okay, now we have to delete the volume as well. Let me delete volume first. Okay. 
So going to the volume, delete volume. I don't want to take any snaps out of this. Okay. And delete. So we are deleting volume first. Okay. Then, then we are going to delete virtual machine, but it is taking time to delete. Okay. So delete this virtual machine, then delete your, uh, sorry, delete the volume, then delete your virtual machine, and finally delete all your on tap volume or uh, one tap uh, file system okay don't forget to delete this because otherwise you may have to pay charges now i'm not going to wait because it will take time i am hoping that you guys will complete your process and you will delete everything same way i have vm as well so i'm going to delete this vm okay going to this server one and server two and terminating Let's verify that if we are able to delete volume. Yes, it is deleted. Let me delete the virtual machine. Okay. See, now it is deleting. Okay, again, it will take time. Once the virtual machine will be deleted, I will delete my on tap volume as well. Okay, on tap file system as well. Don't forget to delete this. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.